Well, we'll see how this works out. Normally, I uh, only do videos of flying videos on my main YouTube page for the RV7. But, <clears throat> I'm going to do some, some other stuff here and there. So, I could, originally the plane was primered with DuPont Corlar primer. So, I acid etched and alodined it, which worked out great. So great, it's kind of hard to get the primer off. And so, um, hat tip to DuPont. Um, DuPont's Corlar, marketed by somebody else, I think now, is a very excellent uh, primer. They would not sell me the aircraft primer, which really made me a little bit angry at them back then. So, they, But they would sell me fleet primer, which is what you would primer a high-end tractor trailer, like a really nice, nice Kenworth that you were going to put a fancy paint job on. And so we put the gray primer on, and we were originally on the plane, we were going to paint it Ferrari Red is the closest captain I were ever going to own a Ferrari, hence the joke, got it? But unfortunately, Kathy, um, after, uh, I think actually after he primered this, we found out she had fourth stage breast cancer in OT6, and we lost her in OT15, courtesy of two nitwit lawyers, two, two nitwit, excuse me, not lawyers, but two nitwit doctors up in Flagstaff. Probably was going to happen anyway, six months, two years extra, but it is what it is. So we had a great run, and unfortunately, we were just trying to get ready to do the engine run, and so it didn't happen. And so there's no way in, in Arizona I could I could paint it because you know airport officials get really PO'd if you're running around painting out in the open, and it would have been a good paint job. And originally, we were going to make a rotisserie for the fuselage so I could do a really nice top grade job on Ferrari Red. So it wasn't going to happen. And so everyone complained in Arizona that they couldn't see me because the plane was light gray, which just taught me why the United States Marine Corps paints their airplanes light gray. And so I said, all right, I, I can't control the color, but there's something I can control. And so I'm going to strip the paint. I'm going to process on the main plane, whole oh, plane eventually, actually stripping it of uh, the primer and polishing it so I have uh, polish that you would use if you're on working on a Boeing 777 you would use new shine for some of the polishing it would be authorized uh, and so forth so I've done some polishing on a plane it's taken about three or four five tries to kind of get good at this and then I finally start buying some abrasives and some specialty items like this kangaroo oil uh, used for uh, doing some of the doing some of the sanding with with really fine abrasives. Um, so it's a pain in the butt. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what it takes to strip paint. Now I've gone through every kind of stripper imaginable, and what I actually found that reasonably worked. They never work in one shot, but. Um, aircraft paint stripper would hardly dent DuPont Corolla, so I'll warn you that in advance. Don't even bother trying. And so I had a guy out in Flagstaff uh, with a lot of experience in stripping paints off airplanes, and he said there's this citrus strip stuff. And I thought I thought he was nuts, and I'd kind of seen it somewhere, so I went and got some of it, and I put some on. I thought this will never work. First off, it doesn't smell bad. You know, you can be in a room with it; it doesn't try and kill you aircraft paint stripper and all this stuff, really nasty stuff. But this stuff, citrus strip, well it really does work, but there's a trick to it. You gotta get this kind of a scotch brake pad, really open, and you gotta do a lot of elbow grease. So I'm gonna show you the elbow grease. So I've already done a little bit of this panel, so you see some of the metal showing through. This is probably going to take another pass with this stuff to do it. Yep, probably. Um, and that'll get us down to the Alodyne. This, this is the aileron on my RV7. It was originally acid etched and Alodyne. But before I acid etched it, I scotch brighted it to kind of scuff it up. And in fact, when it was acid etched, 
I was scuffing it with a gray Scotch-Brite pad to really dig that acid edge in, and then I alodined it. So it's got a really nice layer of alodine, which is why that DuPont Corlar does such an excellent job of bonding this. So if you want a picture playing Ferrari red, yo, dude, acid etch it, using gray scotch Brite pads, working it in, acid etch it, alodine it, primer it with DuPont Corlar. Trust me, paint will stick to it and the Corlar will not come off. So unfortunately, I'm in the position of getting the corollar off. So here we go. And it's what you gotta do. It just, it just ain't nothing easy about it. It's all elbow grease. And you wanna try and get as much of this down so you can start seeing the, the base metal showing up. And you're gonna fill these things up pretty quick. So I got a bunch of my chuck in the water and I take a hose and I wash them down. And so, I can get this down to maybe two or three applications of stripper before I'm stripped. And there'll be some scratching on the surface that I'm going to have to polish out. I have, I have some abrasives coming in to, to uh, handle that problem. So you're going to move around. And like I said, it's really good aerobic work on your upper body. <laughs> uh, it's like, hey man. I did all this stuff, I gotta pay my dues getting it off, but Kathy and I didn't know any better when we did it, so that's the way it goes. Uh, and so we're gonna strip this thing. I guess some of it's stripped, and it's like I said, it's gonna take at least one more try, possibly two, to get the rest of it off. This stuff has been on, I did two coats of it, and so it's been on a little over an hour, munching away, it softens epoxy. And you see that's pretty well filling up. So we move to the other side because law of diminishing returns is kicking in with a vengeance. And well, sometimes you get extra stuff. And you see it works its way through. Oh, the camera angle will not be too good. I got a hat on with a GoPro setup. So we'll see how this works out. So you might hear me talking and not seeing anything. I apologize in advance. All these stain marks you see are from when I stripped and did a rough polish on the other side, but I got abrasives coming in because there's a lot of ghosting in this polish. And yeah, we'll get all that white ghosting out. So if anything worth doing, it's worth doing right. And I finally said, you know what? Do it. This would have been upside down. I had it done all this scratching away upside down. I said, you know, we're gonna do it. Let's do it right. Just pull the aileron and the flap off plane and let's get it done right. And then the real work I got to do on the main wing. And unfortunately in Cottonwood, Arizona right now with the plane's base, it's typically at or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And this stuff starts to dry out and it, it just works better in a a garage with an air conditioner <laughs> to get the temps down so that you're willing to do the work and the sweat. Now you can see how the metal's starting to come through. Now later I'll neutralize this with water. You can neutralize it pretty good. And then uh, like I said, I have some abrasives to further prep the uh, the material, including some 1,000 and 2,000 grit sanding discs. And that's what that kangaroo oil there is for. Uh, Trying to keep the life of the sanding discs up before you plug them up and pull all the grit out of them. So you see, you can work out the, the primer and you are going to get some scratching. And it's like, well, I had to do that when I acid and alodyne it. Now, one time this plane was really shiny when I stripped all this <laughs> and prepped it for primer. And boy, I wish I'd known what I know now, but 
that were kind of hurt because then I would have known what was going to happen with Kathy getting cancer. So that's the way life is. You just got to suck it up and you play it one day at a time. And well, the good Lord, he throws stuff at you and he figures out what you can figure out. So I just hope he gets a chuckle out of all of this. Well, I think he does. I know my mother-in-law would. My mother-in-law loved watching this plane get built. Reminded her when her when her brothers were building jalopies in the 30s, which is coming up on a on a century. And so we, like I said, just trying. I'm trying to get as much of this as I can in one application. And so I've got a bunch of these things. And it takes a while to get it down. This is about the best I can do. Trust me, if I was using aircraft stripper, I'd be looking at four, five, six applications before I get it down to here is the way my my gut feeling is from my experience with it. And that stuff is really nasty stuff to work with. It doesn't have some of the really dangerous chemicals in it that it did originally, apparently. Uh, but it's just nasty stuff to be around. And, and for uh, the other one I, I got some headway on was a marine stripper. And that was not the best stuff in the world, but I was out at the airport and it's heavy winds, so you don't smell it that much. Uh, but if you get it on yet, yeah, you'll know. I guess some stuff will kind of fall back and get on my wrist wrist there and or I bump into something by like doing a flaps and sure enough I'd be scratching away and then my leg would start burning <laughs> and then he knew it was like oops got some on you and you have to put a little water on your leg neutralize it so this, this is the only way I know to get it off so this is DuPont Corlar. I think it's a, a tribute to the DuPont Corporation uh, for their primer. It's a very excellent primer. It's just that it came to where I can't operate. And like I said, everybody complains about the plane can't see it because it's gray. Now they're going to complain they can't see it because it's shiny. And so like I told one of them up in Flagstaff already, well, when you hear me on the on the mic, you better just start worrying about it and get out of my way. So, we're going to get her done. It's going to take a while. But anything worth doing, we're doing right. So, I'm going to cut it here because I'm my arm's getting a little tired. So, hey, have a good one. We're going to get there one day at a time. It'll be worth it in the end. Adios.